Lord Explorer here. Um, this is a first for me. I've never been to this cemetery. This is the Brooksville Cemetery. I've wanted to come for quite a while, but just have never made it over here. This is a classic, old school Florida cemetery, replete with the various headstones and uh, oak trees, moss dripping. This complete serenity and, and, and old Florida beauty. Nowhere near the beach. And, and in Brooksville, people are still, to a large degree, untouched by the, the bigger city area. Um, what makes this compelling beyond that to me is, well, this is one of them. But the other is that in Bushnell, just north of Bushnell, the Crum family uh, settled were the first white settlers in this area and are absolutely instrumental in in settling this part of of the state. They came in 1842. They were the first, um, and this woman here was one of the first. So what's uh, sensational about her particular death um, is she was attacked very near here by in 1842. She was attacked very near here by uh, Indians and killed. The whole party. Uh, escaped except for her she was killed so uh, and that was a big deal back then because the actual the war was actually over but the indians claimed they didn't know it but whatever i mean um that's more or less beside the point uh she is the first burial here on this ground and this is an extensive cemetery we're not going to go anywhere near towards the back i mean that's all newer interments that i'm not at all interested in from an historical standpoint um they're actually turning someone right now back there. Um, I've been here for about an hour and I've traipsed all over this inner area here and I found a bunch of crumbs, which is one of the things I came to look for because all the crumbs are buried here, or many of the crumbs are buried here, I should say, not all of them. Uh, but I couldn't find hers. I, I have not been able to find this particular grave. It says that uh, she was buried here and in a grave once entombed with brick. So I'm assuming they've since moved the brick and put something more ornate up, but I, I don't see it, I haven't found it. So um, it wasn't the main thing I came looking for anyway, but, uh, but I would have liked to have found it. Um, so we're gonna go back in here a little ways. Some of the older in interments going back to the 1840s and, and up and onward. Um, but the Crumb family is one of, their home still stands, it's just in such disrepair. It's actually on my uh, Facebook page wall and cover photo. Um, but it, it's almost, I mean, you know, the next hurricane or whatever, it'll, it'll probably be just blown down. Um, the Hancocks. These are not anything I've seen so far has not been extraordinarily ornate or extraordinarily worn down or worn out. Um, it's just a good example of a well upkept cemetery, and I guess part of the reason why is because they are still interring people here. Um, and these are this is the crumb plot. This is part of it. There's more over here. Um, now that may be hers, I don't know. I can't read anything off of it. I can't read anything off of that. But, you know, suffice that we're, we're here, we're in the area where she is interred in the whole Crumb clan as well. A few examples of some brick plots over here. Here's some more crumbs over here. These are the older crumbs. Um, some of the crumbs who would have been over um, in Bushnell area. Those are all crumbs there. Jesse, 1883, 1923, 91 to 83. 
So those are not super old. But here's here's a little some older ones. It's a different family here. I came through early. Here we go. Ian Piles Crum um, and John W. Crum, 1854 birth, 1852 birth. Um, so. That's starting to get more in line. Those would have been first generation Floridians here from, I guess they came from South Carolina. A lot of, a lot of uh, Floridians to this part of the state um, came from South Carolina and Georgia area, the coastal area, to uh, you know get away from. Well, land was free, and all they had to do was you know farm it and make something out of it, and they could live on it. And it was theirs. Uh, whereas where they came from, the the big plantation owners basically it was almost like a at that time it was almost like a, a dukedom or a fiefdom or something of that nature where these these families owned huge swaths of land, county sized swaths of land, and the planter class. And it was they weren't selling any of it. They were they were keeping it themselves and passing it down from generation to generation so if you wanted decent land as a uh, as just a regular person a regular family you had to go somewhere else to find it which is why so many people after the war moved out west all the land was essentially free for the taking if you could through your enterprise and your courage settle it um, you know, you could have it, it was yours, and you could pass that down to your generation. So, it's just a question of taking it. And that's what they did. And that's what they did here as well. Um, and here we have someone who served their country. This is interesting. Um, it's an 1865 burial date. So he was born in 41. It doesn't say whether he served or not, but he would have been old enough. He was only 24 when he passed. So this is this area right here. And I guess this stone site here marks, I don't know, maybe that's her actual grave and they just stuck that there and trees grew up around it, I don't know. I am sure I haven't found anything that I can identify as her particular gravesite. But um, anyway, it's just an interesting cemetery tucked in, you know, tucked in the greater Brooksville area, just, just outside of downtown, um, south uh, southeast of downtown. And I'm glad I finally got to come here. I'm gonna, continue to walk around see what I can find and take some pictures and just uh, soak it all in so for now we're out